Adjoints determine their coadjoint pair up to unique natural isomorphism. In other words, if f is left adjoint to g and f prime is left adjoint to g, then there exists a unique natural isomorphism alpha from f to f prime such that epsilon prime alpha g is equal to epsilon and g alpha eta is equal to eta prime. To prove this, we use the universal mapping properties of the unit. For each b object b, since eta b is the initial object in the category b over g, then given the unit of the second adjoint situation, eta prime b, there exists a unique amorphism alpha b from f b to f prime b. This gives us the definition of alpha on components b. We verify alpha defines a natural transformation. Given a B morphism F, we want to show the following square commutes. In other words, that G on F prime F alpha B A to B is equal to G on alpha prime B F F A to B. Let's evaluate the purple square by the functor G and precompose by the unit to obtain the following commuting diagram. We see that the left-hand side of the equation above is equal to the high road and the right-hand side of the equation is equal to the middle road. So the equations are, in fact, equal. And thus, the purple square commutes by the universal mapping property of A to B. Therefore, alpha is a natural transformation. We construct the inverse to alpha by symmetry. In other words, we switch the roles of eta and eta prime in the previous argument. Then alpha is necessarily an isomorphism by the universal property of eta and eta prime. And we can demonstrate this by the following diagram, which shows that g alpha b, g alpha inverse b is equal to the identity. And likewise, g alpha inverse b, g alpha b is equal to the identity, implying alpha b alpha b inverse is equal to the identity and alpha b inverse alpha b is equal to the identity. By the construction of alpha, g alpha eta is equal to eta prime, which proves the second equality in the claim above. Finally, we show epsilon prime alpha g is equal to epsilon. We again use the universal mapping property of the unit. Notice that eta g a followed by g f g a followed by g epsilon a prime is equal to eta prime g a followed by g epsilon prime a by definition of alpha. Then by the triangle identity for the second adjoint situation above, this is equal to the identity on g a, which in turn is equal to g epsilon a a to g a by the triangle identity of the first adjoint situation. And we see that epsilon prime alpha g is equal to epsilon by the universal mapping property of the unit. And this completes the proof. We also have the dual argument that coadjoints determine their adjoint pair. And we are going to skip this proof, but if you want to try to follow the arguments, I have given the proof below. Therefore, we see that adjoints and coadjoints are intrinsic properties of functors with essentially unique adjoint coadjoint pairs much like the uniqueness of an inverse to a morphism in the category. So when we say that a morphism is an isomorphism, is much like us saying that a functor is an adjoint or a functor is a coadjoint. We might not give the explicit pair, but we know that it exists up to unique natural isomorphism of functors.